Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my JavaScript video tutorial. Today is all about cookies. I'm going to show you how to create cookies, how to delete cookies, how to get cookies, how to do pretty much anything with a cookie. On the right side of your screen, you're going to see exactly what we're going to create. So let's go and just type in some things inside of here. And there, I just actually created two cookies. And if this is actually recreated or reloaded, you'll see that those two cookies are indeed stored on the machine. And if I specifically asked for a cookie, you're going to see it pops up here on on the screen with the name of the cookie followed by the value of the cookie and I can even come in here and delete said cookie just by clicking in delete and typing in the cookie that I would like to delete and then if you reload it you can see that that cookie no longer has a value and whenever the browser is closed and reopened there will not be a cookie there so now we got to get to actually making all this stuff first thing I'm going to do is come over here and this is just the basic layout that I always use in all my other tutorials for JavaScript. And just to understand, these are the basics of cookies. Cookies are used to store information on the client's hard drive. So that would be people that come to your website. You can only access the information you stored on the client's machine. So for example, you wouldn't be able to go on and get any cookies that Google would store on somebody's computer. And basically, cookies contain a name, value, an expiration date, and also the directory that can access the cookie, that means from your website, as well as all of the domains that can access the cookie. So for example, I'm just gonna type this out. So for first name, it would be laid out just like this. Then you would define when it would expire, and then the path that can access it. If I type it in this, that means every directory within the website will be able to access said cookie. And then domain, you would define what domains can access said cookie. And whenever I put a period in here, that means every subdomain of my website would be able to access the cookie. So let's just create some cookies. Okay, so I'm gonna type in a paragraph tag and I'm gonna say enter your first name. And this is just a basic text box and I have to define an ID so that I'll be able to access it. And then all of these things are gonna be triggered through an on blur event, which is triggered whenever somebody leaves the text box with their mouse and I'm going to pass it first name and then close off the paragraph tag and I'm actually going to copy this and make three copies of it on the screen because all of these guys are quite similar. Change this to the last name, change this to the last name, last name, and that's all you need to do inside of here. And then we're going to come over here, cookie to delete, given an ID. I'm going to call a different function called delete cookie, and I don't need to pass any property over to it. Cookie to get or to display on the screen. And this is just going to be get me, get a cookie and I don't need to pass anything in that situation. And then down here, I'm gonna put in some JavaScript that's gonna print out every single cookie to screen. And there's a link to all this code in the underbar, right like that. And that's all the HTML that goes into creating this guy. So now I gotta create one, two, three functions. And this is real simple. And this is also to a certain extent gonna be a review again of how to use the document object model inside of JavaScript. A cookie, and it's going to receive the ID for the text box over here. And then I gotta create a couple variables get element by ID. I'm going to jump over to whatever is stored. Cookie to get, cookie to get right here. See, the ID name is get me. So I'm going to take the value out of there and store it in this new variable that I just created. And then I'm going to call the split function that is going to split all the cookies and puts them inside of an array based off of wherever a semicolon is. See, there's a semicolon. So I'm going to split all these guys up, stick them in an array. That's what the split function does. And document cookie is a reference to every single cookie that is currently stored or that we stored on the client's browser. And cookie data is just going to be an empty string. So now what we have to do is cycle through all the different cookies with a for statement. And I'm going to cycle through these guys depending upon the length of the array. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to specifically search for the value that was placed in this text box that I grabbed from up inside of here and see if it is contained within the line that has all the cookie information in it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go to this array and I'm going to call the index of function cookie name. And if it doesn't match, meaning like if we were searching for last name, if last name is not in this information, it's going to give me a value of negative one. It's going to pass that back. That's what index of does if it does not find the location that I'm looking for or the name that I'm looking for within this string that's stored inside of this array. However, this is going to occur whenever a match is found, except I'm going to call the replace function because 
there's actually white space right inside of here that you can't see and I'm going to get rid of that extra white space so that doesn't mess up anything here on my screen. So I'm just going to say if there is any white space delete it. And then I'm going to say that I want to pull the actual value out of it. So I'm going to match a substring starting after the end of the variable that I'm searching for. So I'm asking how long is this variable? And then I'm going to take the substring that follows after that. So if I was looking for last name, I'd be asking for the index that starts right here with the letter B. So that's what I'm doing with asking what the length of that is. And then I'm going to add one to it so that I don't get the equal sign. And then what this does is it just opens up an alert box. And in that alert box, it'll contain both the variable name as well as the value stored in said cookie. And then I'm just going to close off all these guys and close off the function itself. So this function right here, get a cookie. If I type in last name, you can see it pops up on the screen with last name, which is the variable name and the value stored therein. That's what that function does for me. So now what I have to do is actually create the function that creates all the cookies. Just based off of me passing a variable name, create cookie. And here I'm going to create a new date. And whenever you create this, it automatically assigns today's date to exp date. And let's say that I want to call the set month function and have this expire, this cookie expire in one month. Call the get month function and just add one to it. And then I got to figure out what value I want to store in said cookie. So what do I do? I retrieve the cookie value from the node that was passed to this function. And then I have to actually create the cookie. And this is how you do it all in one line. New cookie is going to be the variable name for said cookie. And you have to always make sure you keep your spacing perfect when you're creating these things. Cookie value is going to be the value you want to assign to that variable. And then I'm assigning that I want every directory to be able to access that cookie. Close that off. And then you have to call to GMT string so that it's in the right format. Right like that. That creates your cookie with a variable name, a value, the path, and also the date. If you do not assign an a domain name, it will automatically use whatever your domain is. That's why I didn't put that in there. And there's some other little things that you could add on to this cookie, but I don't use them because they're supposedly for security reasons. But as I said before, an intercepting proxy can completely break any security that you set up with JavaScript. So I don't really worry about my security inside of JavaScript. I only worry about that with PHP. So I have to create one more function and it's going to delete cookies. Cookie to delete. And I'm just going to get whatever they put in the text box called delete me. I'm going to ask for its value right like that. And here I'm going to show you another way to create or delete cookies. You can also call the create cookie function. And this is the name of the cookie. This is whatever they passed to me. It's going to be whatever was in this text box. It's going to get passed over here and delete that cookie. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give it no value, which is going to have an immediate effect. And then I'm going to have its expiration day be one day in the past. That will effectively delete said cookie. So you could also use this to create all your cookies though. But I wanted to show you multiple different ways to do that. And that's all that's to it. That's how to create, delete, and get cookies. And if I come in here and type in Sally, for example, and reload this, you can see that Sally now shows up there. Simpson, reload that. You can see that Simpson automatically shows up inside of there. And if I type in first name, you can see first name Sally pops up on the screen. So there is a ton of different ways to use cookies. Up next, because of immense demand, I'm going to start showing you how to build interfaces using JavaScript and CSS. Till next time.